Have you ever wanted to see what it's like to coach a type eight and have them be really vulnerable and transparent? Well, stick around because today is that day. We get to talk with Shannon Bresnan, one of my closest friends and incredible entrepreneurs. She's a type eight and you are going to love listening to the path that we get to take today and discovering something new about her and the path that she's going to head down. Hey, hey, well, welcome back everyone to Your Enneagram Coach, the podcast. And after two months of being away, helping my sweet 80 year old parents move closer to me and helping them through some really rough uh, health struggles, I'm thrilled to be back in the hosting seat of the podcast. But first I wanna say a big thank you to Adam Breckenridge and Brian Lee from our coaching team. They did a fantastic job stepping in and stepping up to the podcast mic. I know uh, you all, like me, have greatly benefited from the topics that they've tackled. Um, I just listened to the most recent one, and man, I think I listened to it twice because I, I was like, Jeff, you got to listen to this with me. So I so appreciate um, Brian and Adam, and I know you guys did too. But I am so excited to share with you guys a new format that we have. We're taking a fresh new look at the podcast. So as you know, at YEC, we are passionate about helping you to grow and use the Enneagram that will bring lasting transformation to your lives and relationships. And we're also deeply committed to training and raising up the next generation of incredible Enneagram coaches. So as such, we are always looking for ways to provide valuable content to both everyday users of the Enneagram and professional coaches. So let me introduce to you my brand new format of the podcast where i know it's going to greatly benefit each and every one of you so what we're going to do is we're going to combine engaging interviews with live coaching sessions so each episode i'm going to start with a conversation with a respectable uh, guest influencer like an author or speaker or maybe one of our certified enneagram coaches and after i introduce them we're gonna trans transition into an actual live coaching session where I'm gonna help the guests gain clarity and a fresh perspective on something they're currently struggling with. Now, this is gonna be so helpful for all of you guys to hear what it's like to be that type and the current struggle they have and what Enneagram coaching is all about. So the goal of these sessions is to showcase the powerful impact that Enneagram coaching has on a person's life because it brings about accelerated transformation. And I'm excited to show this for you so that you can experience it firsthand. So we're gonna dive and explore each person's you know, life, their Enneagram type, the challenges that they have so that they can navigate their own difficulties so that they can be on a better, healthier path for themselves. And I know that this unique blend of interviews, so getting to know them a little bit, but then going into that live coaching session is gonna be so valuable to each and every one of you. And to me as well, I can't wait to get started. This podcast is for you if you're looking to grow in your personal life, relationships, or at work. Because by experiencing someone else working with a certified Enneagram coach, you're gonna learn and see how to get unstuck from your own unique struggles and to begin on a healthier journey for yourself. This is gonna bring immense clarity to you as well. And so if you're out there and you're like, I think I wanna work with a well-trained Enneagram coach that is a perfect fit for you, then let me guide you to our trained certified coaches at myenneagramcoach.com. Com. And you can find one that is a perfect match for you. And if blessing others with the Enneagram resonates with you, like obviously it does for me, then this podcast is for you too. For me, being a part of someone's transformation, watching them right before my eyes grow and change is so fun and such a blessing. So with this new format, you get to see a sneak peek into the world of Enneagram coaching and how you can join others by helping them to grow as well in becoming an Enneagram coach. And so if you're interested in becoming an Enneagram coach, then you'll definitely want to listen to this podcast and join our highly sought after training, become an Enneagram coach. And to do that, I highly recommend that you start with our free mini course. And you can get that at yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash mini course. Okay, so that's the new format. And I'm thrilled to get started with this 
with you today. Yep, today I can't wait to start this journey with you. And we get to do it with one of my absolute favorite people in the world. In today's episode, I'm sitting down with my good friend, Shanna Bresnan. Now, Shanna has offered her friendship, guidance, and wisdom to me even before YEC fully took shape. I mean, back in the day. She is the driving force behind communitycultivated.com, and she truly embodies what it means to be a passionate type eight with that adventurous type seven wing. So today I'm gonna chat with Shanna about understanding the drive of the type eight while also protecting herself and her family from the intensity that can happen for an eight and that can lead to burnout. So let me welcome Shanna today. Shanna, welcome. We are so glad to have you. You're such a dear friend. Even well, we're here because you texted me like, hey friend, how's it going? And you do that all the time. And I just thank you so much for your thoughtfulness, um, your care for me, for Jeff, our family. But first, tell us a little bit more, because I know about you, but tell our guests a little bit more about yourself, your family, um, how you learned about the Enneagram and your main type. Yeah, well, Beth, I'm so glad to be here. You sure are brave to try this new format with an intense type eight like me, but we're going <laughs> to work through this together. <laughs> but yes. I'm feeling a little nervous about being coached live, but this is going to be awesome. Um, so my name is Shanna. I am married to my wonderful husband, Casey, who is a type nine, and we have four children. Our oldest of which is about to get married in just a few weeks, which is super oh. fun. And then we have a, a nine-year-old, a five-year-old, a two-year-old. We homeschool. We're right in the thick of it all. And I have been a full-time entrepreneur since 2012. And I work specifically with online business owners who have courses, memberships, and group coaching programs to help them create thriving communities that increase their retention, keep their customers coming back for more, basically. Yeah. And boy, you do a great job. I mean, the things that you have shared with me over the years, I we have implemented a hundred times over, um, just so valuable. So if anyone is interested in the work that Shanna does, you will want to jump into her courses, her live events, her trainings, consulting, whatever it is, trust me, she will have your back. That's what I love about type eights. They will plow a path for you. But what I really admire about you, Shanna, is that you do it with such grace and patience and kindness and warmth. I know that you resonate more with a seven wing, which I'm sure is very true. But I will say when I have worked side by side with you, um, whether it is with um, YEC stuff, you know, business stuff, or just as a friend, I really genuinely feel a very strong nine presence in you. Just that receptivity, non-judgment, that you are very open, that you see my perspective, that you're not just trying to plow a path that you want to have for me. Like you genuinely see through my own lens. And so I just really want to thank you so much for your authenticity and realness, but also coming alongside me in the way that I need to. So you are amazing. So thank well, you. You know, it's kind of interesting because I think a lot of that is the counseling and the work that I've done over the years and just how long I've been introduced to the Enneagram because we actually got introduced to it when our oldest, who is our niece, that we adopted. So we, back in 2014, we adopted uh, my 13-year-old niece and we had our first child and we immediately got her into counseling. And through that, that's when they told us about the Enneagram and mm. started to try and type her. Now they originally typed her as a type eight. And then over time, as I learned more about it, I was like, no, no, no. I'm a type eight. She's definitely not a type eight, but she is a six that presents herself outwardly as a type eight in a lot right. of ways. Um, but we we really dove into it to support and help her and for us to better understand how to parent this struggling teen. But mm -hmm. then as we met you and Jeff and got to know you all personally, we were coming to you to really help support us as we are just really two different people in marriage in a lot of ways. And we... Um, needed help around how do we navigate each other when, as uh, an old pastor of ours used to say, a shark married a turtle and <laughs> <laughs> the shark's always attacking the turtle and the turtle's always going in a shell. And how do we uh, find some mutual balance there? So I think being married to a nine and having the support of you and Jeff and just the knowledge that we've learned from your books has really helped sort of create more balance in me over the years. Mm. Well, I'm so glad. And it's been such a joy to just walk alongside, you know, you and Casey. Um, I love that analogy. And you can imagine me being a nine who resonates a lot with the eight wing, though I do use the one 
a lot, especially in business and like when I'm working on the business. But within me is that turtle shark happening in the moment. It's like, what is happening? So yeah, it's a whole conundrum, but I love it. Um, okay, so the other day, well, this is how this all happened. You text me like, hey, Ren, how's it going? Um, and I was like, you know, it's going, you know, it's, we're writing a book and, you know, a manuscript that's due like literally in like a week right now. And, um, so we're doing that. I've got my 80 year old parents, uh, now living 20 minutes away. Thankfully they're in the best place possible. Um, they're doing well, but it has been several months of like ups and downs and you just really been there to walk me through some of those uh, moments and just listening. And I've just so appreciate it. So I was able to share with you what I've been going through, but then I'm like, Hey, what about you? Like what's going on? And so then we started talking about this podcast and like, Hey, would you <laughs> be open to being coached live, you know, and something that you're struggling with? And so you shared with me that day that, you know, you have all of these passions and talents that's, you know, cause we, a lot of people can have passions, but it doesn't mean you can actually go and do it. You have passions and the actual ability to, to do it and the personality to pivot quickly to make things happen. So you just can go for it. And as an eight, we talked about this, how as an eight, it's like an eight is, well, it's like we're all a light bulb with a dimmer switch and eights are just on full throttle. They're at a hundred percent. They are just bright and glowing. They have all this energy and like, let's go for it. Like, this is the best way to live. I feel alive. But that means that it can burn out quickly without you even knowing it. Because it's like, hey, it's been bright this whole time. It's just going to keep going, right? Um, and so you kind of shared with me that. Um, but you've also noticed over the years by living that way, you've also struggled with burnout. Like it just comes up unexpectedly. Like what just happened? Then you have to re-navigate your life and your path and figure that all out. And that is a very common blind spot for an eight because it feels so good and so invigorating and alive to be at that hundred percent. And so you were wanting to like talk about today, um, that current struggle that you have, cause you have all of these passions and desires, but you also, and you've grown so much, like you said, you've, you've done the coaching, you've, you've done the counseling, you've really worked on yourself and you know that you can't live in that same path, that same trajectory all the time. Now there's times that it works out great. Um, but how do you pull back the dimmer switch? How do you dial it back? Which really is hard for AIDS because it feels inauthentic. It feels like you're editing yourself, that you can't be who you really are, which in some ways I can see how that can feel true, but it's, it's actually not true. You can still be your authentic self, but in a way that serves both you and others. So am I painting kind of a picture of what we talked about the other day? And what would you love in this conversation? Like what would be the outcome that you would love to see? And is there anything else that you'd like to add to the scenario to kind of paint a fuller picture of kind of that burnout situation that you usually um, experience? Yeah. And it's interesting because I think I, I'm sure burnout looks different for every type, but um, the people that know me that work with me day in and day out would probably never believe that I get burnt out, but it looks different for me. And it shows up when, um, things are often going really well. Mm -hmm. And one of two things happens. One is that I self-sabotage because it gets boring, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've built the thing. I've launched the thing. It's working now. Okay. Now this is really boring. I, <laughs> I want to do something new and fresh. Uh, that, you know, that's one way that it shows up. But the other way, which is sort of a, an underlying theme of my life that has become really prevalent over the last few years is this feeling of the wanting to feel contentment, but constantly mm. feeling this tension of, I feel like God really wants me to serve him and like be all in for him and be all in for my family and invest more time in those areas. But he's also gifted me with all of this business acumen and this ability to create impact in an entrepreneurial way. And so, like you said, I often, my, my light bulb is, is burning full bright for business because that's really easy and comfortable for me to do after 10 plus years of this. Um, mm -hmm. And logically for me, I have a history with financial stuff. So um, that financial security and being the primary breadwinner in our family, that's really important. So I feel the responsibility. So I'm I'm easily putting myself all into that. But there's always like this little voice in the back, back of my head going, yeah, but like what does passion for God look like? And what does it look like to live passionate for God? So I think for me, 
in talking about the light bulbs, I'm like, I want four or five light bulbs burning bright at all times. <laughs> so <laughs> when it's really only burning bright for one thing, a lot of people look at me and they're like, oh, you're so successful and you have this incredible husband and these amazing kids and you homeschool and like, how do you do it all? And I'm like, but I'm not doing it all. Trust me. Like I wake up every day feeling like, am I doing the right thing? So um, more than more than just like the crash that people think about with burnout, it's almost like this underlying feeling of not doing enough in all areas and feeling mm. a little bit like, uh, there's got to be something more, there's more to this. And then ultimately that hits a peak. And then I, you know, rethink my entire existence. Does it also feel like, um, because you only have one light bulb. And so you're, you're gonna have to, um, you know, kind of like share the light bulb with these different areas of life right and so what i think you you're realizing is okay so if i use 90 percent of the light bulb wattage with my work then everyone else gets 10 percent, and i feel guilty and then you know is that seem kind of accurate yeah and i think it's kind of interesting because i think for a long time i thought it was guilt um mm. but this kind of goes back to my story. I think you know, Beth, that I have, um, out of my four siblings, three of them passed away before the age of 37. And so in that, I always have this feeling of life is short, life is short, mm -hmm. you know? And even today as we're recording it, it's the sixth uh, year anniversary of my uh, sister passing, one of my mm -hmm. sisters. So there's always this underlying feeling of life is short, God has called us to live this really abundant life and yeah. um and is is what I'm doing in the day to day like monotony of what what is running a business and you know educating our kids and being married and doing is that enough like is this mm. the, it's that it's that seeking fulfillment but for me because because I want the light bulb burning bright because I want to feel intensity in so many areas. Like, I don't know, like, it, it's not even a matter to me of like feeling guilty because my husband's really happy. I mean, I work less than I did when I was in corporate, you know, my kids, they think I'm never around, but I'm around all the time. We take plenty of vacations. We, we do all the things, you know, I take Fridays off. Like, it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm working too much on paper. You know, I'm not working 60, 80 hours a week. I'm working 30 hours a week, honestly, mm -hmm. but it's that like, feeling of 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 impact and needing to do more and be more and really make the most of this life that leaves me feeling discontent like i don't think anybody else is looking at me and going you're not enough but internally it feels like it am i using this life for what it's meant to be used for so okay so let's go there what if you're not using this life to the fullness what does that mean? Oh, man, like, I don't know, like, we just we, um, you know, we've been given like one life to live. Yeah. And I, I think I, I think most people think they have a long, you know, a long life to live. And for me, even, you know, just growing up with um, siblings passing away when I was really young, the thought was always, you may not make it to 37. So when I made it to 37 this year, it was like, okay, well, this is just icing on the cake. But at the same time, like looking back and go, going, wow, that was, okay, that was 36 years. Like what, it, what has been the impact of those 36 years? And is there more that God is calling me to that I am not living up, like listening to, not obeying his calling? Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing a, a lot of things and a lot of things that feel good and write and nobody would look at my life and be like, you've wasted it. But there's just like this internal feeling, like unsettled feeling of there's something more that I should be doing. So, but what if you don't, <laughs> what if you don't fulfill it? Like what, what is that fear? Like what, let's say, let's say you only live to 38. Yeah. What is the fear between now and then? I mean, like you, you, you said with the, like the overall fear, but like, what, what does that mean? 
for you? Like, what does that say either about you? Yeah. Yeah. It's that thought of like leaving things undone. Like, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just like not honoring the life that was given to me, I guess, you know? And yeah, I don't, it's kind of, um, it's kind of interesting because like, I, it again, isn't, it's not anybody else's expectation on me. It's my expectation on myself, right? Mm-hmm. It's, I, I just, I, I don't want to waste the life that God has given to me. Like, I don't, I don't want to get to heaven's gate and God looks at me and goes, Shanna, you did a lot of really great things and you missed the most important one, you know, which was making disciples of all nations and, you know, all of that. Right. So I think, I think I've talked to a lot of Christians in the business space who constantly deal with this struggle of having influence. You have, we all have influence over somebody, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're in the business world, you tend to have an expanded influence. Yeah. And you have to balance the influ- like how you use that influence. So for me, I don't have a faith-based business at all. Uh, mm-hmm. I People know, I mean, that know me know that I'm a Christian and I don't do anything against my faith by any means, but it's not interwoven into everything that I do, nor do I really want it to be because I, I feel um, like God has called me to be a safe place for people. So yeah, it's just like a, a constant battle. I talk to other Christians as well who say it's it's a really hard struggle to know when to use your influence for God's kingdom versus like you're using your influence and God is providing for you financially or he's providing one-off relationships and um, you're building authority and connection and trust with people. And maybe you have that conversation with one person, right? Or maybe the money that you make is able to give to the kingdom to go and support, you know, missionaries. Right. But you're not necessarily using your platform to speak about God's goodness. And so one, one thing I'd love to like, kind of, kind of go there with is let's look at like, Christ's life. So when he was on this earth, you could easily say, well, you know, he was going about his father's business. Yes. And he wasn't with all the Jews or all the Pharisees or all the people that said they were, you know, doing God's will, you know, following all the laws. Who was he mainly around? Just his disciple, his inner circle, really. Yeah. And just the everyday person. You know, yeah. and so I think what would it, what could it look like to emulate Christ in a way that he lived, but right where you are at? And are you doing that? Good question. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know that I am doing that. Hmm. I think I'm doing it in uh, some circles, like I run a, a, um, a small mastermind of Christian women business owners and helping to bring them together to equip them and their faith. And God has done amazing things through that group and actually helping them find, uh, Christian relationships where they are, because a couple of them, uh, I'd say three of them live in a pretty uh, spiritually dry area of the country. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting to think about it that way. And I would say, I mean, definitely in our home, like with our kids, it feels like, mm-hmm. you know, you're definitely raising little disciples. But then my husband's really the one leading homeschool there. So I'm not as involved as I could be. There goes that light bulb again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and also I, I think where I was, where I would love to like, take you and guide you is more, I think there's this, and this is my thoughts, you know, as a person, I think there's more that God is asking us to do than to be with quote unquote 
Christians, like a Christian bubble to be doing those Christian things. I think he, part of the great commission is to get out there and to share ourselves with others. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think that always has to be that I'm sharing the actual gospel with words. It is a overflow of our heart. I mean, God says it, what is in our heart comes out and what better representation to the world than to literally emulate Christ <clears throat> right where you're at. And I know you well enough to know that that is exactly who you are, whether you are literally with a known Christian or a person who's not a Christian, like you are the same person, you are authentic, you are real, you say what needs to be said for the betterment of others. Now, of course, we could talk about, you know, when you do those things in healthy ways and less healthy ways, of course, because we're all there. But knowing you the way I know you, you are authentically present and willing to plow a path for whatever person comes your way. And that is what I see as more Christ-like than I think what I'm hearing you saying. Like if I was more Christ-like, I would be doing more X, Y, and Z Christian things or with Christian people. What would it mean for you to shift your way of thinking that it you are in the right place that God wants you to be because he he's bigger than you. He knows more than you. If he didn't want you in the position you are right now, blessing the people in the wide scope that you have, Christians and non-Christians and everything in between, that he would get you to go somewhere else and do something else. So what what would it feel like and look like and how how do you think? What's your gut reaction basically to what if you are exactly where God wants you to be? It's interesting because the entire time you were talking about that, I was thinking about when, before my husband and I were married, we used to serve a lot. Like we had a ministry in inner city, East Nashville that we were involved in. We were out there two to three times a week. And uh, then when we had kids, we helped start, um, well, even in the midst of that, we had helped start a church in Antioch, which if you're not familiar with the Nashville area, there's over 70 different nationalities in Antioch. And so it was a very missionally oriented church. And then later we ended up moving to a church that was local here to us because we felt like God was calling us to put our teenager into a church where she would know people that she goes to school with and something more local, right? So we did um, that. And in having our teenager, um, she brought a lot of people into our life that needed love and um so I had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with people that didn't know the Lord and wanted to. And mm -hmm. she's been out of our home for a few years now. And so like those opportunities just aren't as prevalent. They're not as in, in my face, I guess, if you will. And so it's been a while since I've had like that kind of opportunity mm -hmm. to feel like I am serving in that way. Yeah. And so, and I, this is why I just love you so much. Cause like you have such a huge heart for people and it shows everywhere you go. And so what do you actually, do you feel and believe that this part of your heart, this love for people emulates and is transfers to the people that you are consulting with and working with in the business field? Um, and I'm not saying from like, no. like actual Christian viewpoint, like, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm, like, I'm not putting it in Christianese, but like, are you passionate about these people? Are you, mm. um, the same fervor and desire, is it transposing on to the people that you are working with? In a lot of ways it is. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't you tell me first a lot of the ways that it is and then tell me the ways that you don't think it is. Yeah. Like for some of our clients, like I think about one client who um, sent me a message and just said, you know, the thing I love about you the most is that I know that you're unlike any other consultant because you actually care about right. us and our company, right? You're not just here to make a dollar. Like 
you really care about the health of our company and the health of our people. Um, and I often get emails of people. I was just emailing with somebody back and forth the last couple of days who's considering becoming a community manager and going through our training. And she has lots of questions. And I personally am answering those questions for her and giving her that support. And anytime anybody joins my email list, I send them a video message. And sometimes I'm sitting here for an hour <laughs> sending personalized video messages to every single person that joins the list. Um, but I want people to know that they are cared for and that they are seen. And that's ultimately what I teach. I mean, I, my passion mm -hmm. for what I do, which is teaching community comes from the belief that we are made in the image of a triune God. And when we do not have community, we can, we cannot show up fully as who God created us to be, because right. that is what ignites us. Right. And so, um, and sometimes I get opportunities to speak about that specifically at like Christian conferences or whatever. But yeah, I, I mean, I definitely believe that people that work with me and um, especially people in like my group program and my clients experience that passion um, that stands out from a lot of just the automated things in this world. And I try to teach that as well to people that we automate and systemize to create space for human to human connection and that that's ultimately where our impact lies is creating safe space for people to show up fully. And where is it not hitting that, that where the tears come in about your passion to reach a certain, like whether it's a certain group or a certain, like in a certain way, I think it's more. And so you could tell me if I'm wrong, it feels like it's more that you're reaching people in a certain way, not necessarily an actual group of people. Do you feel yeah. like that's what God is calling you to? Like that there is a a way that you your gut literally just spills forth of this compassion and passion, which is exactly what Christ was like, right? Like when they talk about compassion of Christ, it's like gut wrenching. And and I see your tears, which to me is really saying, I have great compassion for people and I just wish I could do so much more. Is that true? Yeah, I think. I think it's a combination of like a lot of the people that I work with are established multi-million dollar business owners, you know, like, um, and I think it's, I'm so used to seeing people in their physical needs and desperation and lost and unwanted that yeah. sometimes I forget that the multimillionaires with all this influence and successful businesses, like if they don't know the Lord, they are that same person inside, mm -hmm. that same lost and seeking person. Um, and I, I don't really like, I don't really share my story. Um, I don't talk a lot about it. And, you know, it was years and years ago when God was really pulling me closer to him that he just made it very clear. Like you can keep the broken pieces and, you know, they'll continue to assure you or you can give them to me. I'll make them into a beautiful mosaic, but you have to be willing to share them because mm -hmm. the tragedies and stuff that we endure in our life, they are for not unless we are willing to, to share that story and share how God has redeemed it. Right. So right. I, um, you know, in some instances I get to share, you know, I've had the opportunity to, to speak and share my story at churches and stuff before, but yeah, I don't. And, and I think it goes back to like that feeling of, well, what if life ends and I haven't done enough? I think it is that feeling of that story to tell, you know? Yeah. And I was, I was just talking to my, I was just talking to my team about this. I was like, I feel like I need to rethink my entire platform. And I think we need to just put this business as its own business and like not really put my face on it, phase my face out of it. And then we'll let me have my own platform so that I can say what I want to say, how I want to say it, whenever I want to say it. And I do feel like a bit muzzled because mm -hmm. I, I know that if I were to share my story and be like totally authentic, like it would impact my business. There's, I know the clients I serve. I love them to pieces. Mm -hmm. I love them to pieces, but they don't all love Christianity. You know, sure. uh, they don't all love Jesus, <laughs> but, um, 
So I, and also just in the business world, like I know what works to build a business. And I know you talk on your platform about who you help and how you help them and who you serve. And that's what you do. And if you talk about too many other things, it's going to be a distraction and it's going to keep from, you know, you being able to build your business. And so I have had this feeling of like, well, maybe I just need my thing. And then I have this business thing that's separate because there is that like that. And I think every person feels this. I have a story to tell. Yeah. And if I have a platform and if I have people that will listen, whether it's one hundred or a hundred thousand, I want to use that story to help other people. Yeah. Do you, and I think this is great. Like, just thank you so much for all that you're kind of sharing. So let's say you, you do kind of put the business to the, like, not to the side, like you're not doing anything, but like it's its own thing. And then you create a different platform that is authentic you and real, and you are able to really go into the story and the things that you've learned and what God has put on your heart. Do you feel and I know you can't know until you actually do it, but do you feel that the tears that are welling up today about, you know, if I died this year, am I fulfilling God's mission and calling on my life? If you were to do that platform, do you think that that would fulfill that ache in your heart? If I could do that and journal and write, coupled with that, because I think that to me is a big mm -hmm. habit that I've lost that I love. Um, and I knew I could provide for my family <laughs> and I knew I could still provide for my family. Um, yeah, that would be incredible. Mm. So what, what could that look like? Is that possible? I'm, I mean, like, I'm actually actually asking asking a genuine question from someone who really is in this space, right? Like you, yeah. like if I were you, like let's say we were to switch roles and I came to you to consult, mm -hmm. and I mean, in some sense, we're kind of the same. Like I've got your Enneagram coach the business, but if I had things I wanted to share that was completely different, it wouldn't make sense to add it to right. your Enneagram coach platform, right? Um, so, is it is it possible, like? And not just like, is it possible theoretic, theoretically, what we're talking about you as a type eight with a seven wing who can pivot and you've got a lot of three in you. Um, you're able to get in there, make some lists, set some goals, knock it out. You know what your family needs because you are very well versed in your own financial situation and what your needs are. And you're not the kind of person that's like, I have to have all the things like you are such an amazing person. Like you're such a good example for me. So I know that you're the type of person that's like, hey, here's the realistic needs of my family. And you do a fabulous job already caring for your family. And knowing you, you're probably like, I know I can keep a roof over my family's head and provide for them really well. Like you have a bazillion different tools in your back pocket to create that, whether it's mm -hmm. this business or another business, you know, like you can do pretty much whatever you want, which is totally fabulous. So you know that, and you have this passion that you want to move towards. You've also learned more recently how to dial the dimmer switch back. Cause we've talked about how you've learned to work less hours than pouring 60 hours into your work, how to dial it back. So you have much better family life balance, which is so incredible for an eight. That is so hard to do, yeah. especially when that, you was, feel... that came from my husband basically being like, I won't survive any longer if this is how it goes. But I mean, but that doesn't mean you have to, cause an eight doesn't want to be challenged and told what to do. Like you, yeah. You, if you were in unhealth, you would have been like, well, that's just on you. Like you're going to yeah. have to figure it out, you know? Um, so because you're in more health, you are, you have done a lot of growth mindfulness and you've set, and you told me I have set really rigid boundaries on my work. Um, because, and you said you wanted to cultivate community and to be able to be with people more. So I feel like you're already heading down this path. But the question is, is this actually something that can happen? Like balancing the passion in the message and doing those things. Cause I feel like that's the easiest part of your life. Like that would be like literally just, you know, like at eight, it's like a dam and you're just, someone just like taps, you know, the dam and it breaks and you're like, oh, here it comes. Like, it feels like that would be so easy. Cause it's just who you are authentically. It's can everything 
do you feel like you can rightfully manage or keep those boundaries in place to sustain this business and or or the businesses or whatever you have going on to take care of your family, which is a huge thing for Nate, and do this passion, which would be this ultimate fulfilling of the calling that you feel like God has in your life. Can't do it on my own. I and mean, I I probably need to rethink my team situation. Um but you know if I if I um if I had a team member that was really co-responsible, if you will, for that community cultivated brand where we do yeah. the community manager training and all of that kind of stuff. Um, if I had a team member that was really helping in the transference, if you will, of influence from Shanalyn to community cultivated, it would take time, mm -hmm. but I could do it. Yeah, I think for me, I want to do it overnight because right. that's just like, that's just who you are. <laughs> but I also know I don't want to blow my business up either. Right. Um, and I think but, that's yeah. one thing I would I want to challenge and maybe push back on a little bit here is the the eight seven combination is so powerful and dynamic, and it has great liabilities. So. The great part about the 8-7 is that you can just start plowing a path and you have all of these passions, both of them. Like the eight is like intensity, uh, excess, drivenness. Um, I'm gonna get what I want, you know, like it's just gonna happen. And the seven's like, but what do I want? I want all the things and I wanna do this and I wanna do this and this is gonna be fun and this is gonna be great. And like, we can try this. And like, there's no real failure for the seven. The sevens are like, oh, that didn't work. Okay, let's pivot, let's do this, let's try this. And so there's so many things that you could do, which is great, but it also can inhibit the actual thing that sounds like you're feeling passionate and called to do, which is um, the sharing of your authentic story. So we'll just call it your story platform, you know, for now. Mm -hmm. That feels like that's you at your core. The business side, you could start a bazillion businesses, but I think you're going to find yourself continually running into this feeling of I'm bored. I want to do more and correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like maybe you're bored because you're not actually doing the real passion you have. So all these other things are fun for a second. You know, I always say like for sevens, life is like cotton candy, you're like, oh my, like a little kid. And it's like all these things out there have like cotton candy on the tree, like these different experiences and you go and you grab it and you eat it, but you're starving, right? And you're eating it thinking, this is going to make me feel so content and fulfilled, but it doesn't. And so you're spending all this time and energy grabbing the cotton candy and consuming it but it's not actually doing anything long-term and you, what you really need is real sustenance. So my, my fear, my concern would be that if you were to scrap cultivated or uh, community cultivated.com to go to the next fun thing, it, that next fun thing is going to not be that, you know, it's just going to be cotton candy yeah. Yeah. where it's like, God has given you a gift, this business that's sustaining your family. And what if, you're able, and I know you're able, <laughs> this is literally what you do for a living. What if you're able to set it up in such a way that you're only, you know, in it 50% of the time of what you are today, mm -hmm. you've got all these people, you know, you're overseeing and managing and they're doing all that stuff so that you can then really pour out your heart in the way that actually fulfills you. And so therefore it's not cotton candy anymore. This is the real sustenance in life. This is the spring of living water, right? Christ himself. And you are feeling like, like your tears. When you would talk about going to Antioch and being with um, <clears throat> your daughter's friends and all those things, like that would be you on a regular basis, that fulfillment. So do you see how the seven with the eight wing, the blind spot is that, yes, you can do a thousand things and you can set it all up and you can, but it's just going to keep you perpetually chasing the cotton candy. Yeah. And not the actual substance. Does that feel true and accurate? Oh, that's 100% accurate. Community Cultivated is my fourth business that I've built. All so, I mean, prior to that, we've built successful businesses. And then I've ultimately like silently self sabotaged and gone on to like something new and exciting, all in the community realm, of course. But um, I think 
that's probably what scares me the most about even speaking, which I don't talk about much, but like even speaking about that inner desire to do something different and more. Uh, I I have told Casey, my husband before, I'm like, I, I don't even know that I want to pray about what God is really calling me to because I'm scared he's going to tell me to sell it all and like, you know, just go and live like this really countercultural life. And, um, and he's like, well, I don't think I'm ready for you to pray for it either. If that's what you're <laughs> exactly. afraid of, but, but it is that like you explaining that in a, in such a way to where it's like, well, you can, you can have this stable business. You can, you know, have a team that's supporting you in this business and that can grow and that can financially support your family. And you can, um, show up fully as yourself and what you feel like God is calling you to do and share your story and share your passion and share God's word on another platform. And you can do both without. Um, and I wouldn't say that to yeah. everyone. Yeah. Like I, I, I mean, I'm just being honest. Like I, if, if I was coaching another person with another story, with another type, with another gifts and skill sets, I, I probably wouldn't say you can do this. Like not a lot of people, <laughs> can do what you can do now as you and i know you've got your own liabilities and stuff but from the passion i'm hearing from you that really feeds your soul i believe it sounds like god is really calling you that and stretching you to get there someday and that's what's so good about you is that you can map this all out and even though you want to get it get there tomorrow, bring in the nine part of yourself and say, okay, you're nine and you're five. That's what you're going to need in this space. Okay. Cause the nine part of you is going to be like, Hey, let's just chill. It's all going to work out. It's going to be fine. We're going to get there. Even if we're, we're the turtle, you know, <laughs> the turtle wins the race. So, okay. Write down, you know, exactly what it is that you think that God is calling you to do and your passion. What would that look, you know, laid out, you know, in, the, in as full of a form as you can. Okay. And when would be a reasonable date for that to like unfold? Like not a reasonable date, like an actual human reasonable date with four kids and all the things. So what's a reasonable date for that? And then also just, and so bring the nine to say, hey, we're going to get there and use your husband on this. So like, Casey, I need to bring some nine energy (laughs) into this. What would you say to me in this moment? I want to get there in five seconds, but... And, and that's where the eight or the nine has had to learn patience because we have that internal fog, right? So if we're, if you and I are walking down the street, you see everything clearly and you can sprint to it. No problem for me. I'm like, dude, you got to hold on. I, it's going to take me a hot minute because I can't hardly see anything. And so let Casey be that, like that barometer, that gauge for you to slow it down a little bit, to, to make sure everything is, is well taken care of because the end goal, I really do believe just like talking to you, the end goal is that God is going to bring fruition to this amazing thing that's going to unfold, but it has to be done in a different way. And that's in the different way is the way of challenge and growth, which means we have to rely on him. Right. And that for all of us is a hard struggle for our own types reasons, but for the eight, it's like, no, but I feel that I have to be the strong one. I have to be the, um, the one, the rock, the social rock, the one that provides, because if I don't, who is like, who's going to step up to the plate if I don't do it, but that, and so the message the eight longs to hear is you will not be betrayed. You won't be blindsided. You won't be taken advantage of like, that's what you're really looking for, but you're looking around like, yeah, but who's going to be that person for me, you know? And so then the, what that causes inside the aid is, well, there's no one else, let's say person-wise, there's no one else that's going to do this business. Like I'm doing it or take care of it. Like I could take care of it. And that my family's livelihood is all tied up into it. So I've got to step up. I've got to do this work and I can't do my calling you know, my other passion calling, because it's all your calling. I can't do this other passion calling because no one else is going to stand up for me. And I feel like God is now saying, I've got you. Like I literally, I've got you. I know exactly how to take care of your family, how to take care of you and how to take care of this passion. And I've given you all the skill sets that, that will help you to get there. Just trust me. And that can be so challenging for Nate because literally what 
what we're encouraging eights to do is to envision yourself as a lamb. Lambs are super weak. <laughs> They're constantly, and we all are, right? We're all sheep. We're constantly wandering off. We're licking gross water instead of going to the stream. We're, um, if, if we weren't moved from one pasture to another, we literally will decimate the land. And so we constantly have to follow our good shepherd. Well, he is literally picking you up right now. And he is saying, Shanna, you are doing what I've asked you to do. It, there's, if I saw you, I would be so pleased because it's not about you doing it. It's about me doing it to you and through you. And I've already got you. And so he's holding you tight. And if there was a wolf or, you know, a coyote or something nearby, or, guess what? You're in his arms. And so what allows the eight to rest is that vision of pure protection, pure love, pure nurture. And that when he sets you down, because things are safe, he's going to guide you in the right trajectory, the right path, because on your own, you will make a mess. So as an eight, this is the moment where you can go, okay, I'm not going to die and not have fulfilled God's calling because he literally has me. He is in me and he is going to spill forth from me. I am just going to, as best I can, with his loving guidance, put this in place in the time frame that he has. I'm going to have to be patient and kind because that's just the process, but he's got me at the end of the day. What does that vision feel like to you? Like, what does your gut feel? Feel safe. Um, it like feels empowering in a way. Um, just knowing that as long as I'm staying close to God and seeking him in the midst of this, like I really can't go wrong, whether it's a season yeah. of building or a season of resting. Yeah. And that's, and I think that, and I have, um, actually in our book, more than your number, um, if you look in the introduction, there's a picture of this lamb and I have it on my phone all the time being embraced. Like the, literally the shepherd has its hand on the neck of the sheep and the sheep's eyes are closed and it has like this peaceful look on its face. And every type that I show it to, I'm like, what do you see? What do you feel? And they all, all the types say what their type, like from their vantage point. So like you would say, I feel safe. Mm -hmm because it's fear being betrayed and, and harmed and blindsided. I see it and I go, I feel peace. I feel at rest. And so the, the longing of each of our types is already fulfilled by God himself. And we know that logically, but it's at a different place when we look at the gospel from our types vantage point and allow it to speak to us in the language we need to hear. So you might be at church or reading the Bible and you're hearing language that fits all the other types, all of our types, right? It's all good news. But are we speaking to our heart, the mother tongue of our heart, the language we need to hear? And so God is saying to you, Shanna, I've got you. I've got your family. You're doing a fabulous job. You've had four businesses that you started and they've done incredible. You've blessed all these businesses and their families' lives and their clients. I've got you there. So now trust me as we unfold what this new venture of that business looks like, what it's going to become so that you can spill forth the actual vulnerable, passionate part of your heart that is your story and the things that it's going to bless other people with. And so he is literally saying, I have you. This isn't about you getting it right, you fulfilling the mission. It's him fulfilling the mission in you. Does that feel more doable and more safe. Yeah. Phyllis uh, takes the pressure off. <laughs> right. And so here is the eight. It's like, usually you're walking around. This is like the normal kind of eight MO. I've got to do it all. I've got to be the strong one. And if you can just picture yourself as that sheep and I'll send you the picture um, later today, because obviously we have emails and I'll probably just text it to you, but that vision keep that close by so that when you start to feel and you're going to and this is what i want to tell all the types is the message your heart longs to hear and the way you naturally go to get it the human way we try to go get it, it just naturally rises up we don't have to shame ourselves about it that is we're on this side of heaven but the more we can remind ourselves of what is gospel truth 
then we can rest in it in a way that actually opens our type's heart to the fulfillment of who he is. And so as you go in this venture and you're starting to feel, but I got to be the strong one. I got to provide for the family. I've got to make this message come out. And I've got, when those things start to happen and it's your passion about it, you love it too. Like it's fun. Not that it's a slippery slope in a huge bad way. Just let that be that rumble strip that goes, oh, wait, hold on. Like, yes, that's cool. I can do all those things. And yes, I have the ability to provide for my family, but he's got me and I can rest and I can feel nurtured and protected and guided and then bring that restful state into this whole new path. That's, I think, where we're going to see. So I can't wait. Like, it's like, when is this going to be like a year from now? Or when is it going to be that we get to see old? in such a beautiful way. So as we wrap it up, what what are your last thoughts in kind of encompassing this whole kind of story that we've kind of gone through today? I I think I'm just grateful. Like it um it's it's really challenging to have an underlying feeling that just is kind of lurking that you're afraid to talk about because of what it might bring to life for you and your family if you talk about it, but then for somebody to give you permission, if you will, to say, no, you don't, you don't have to shut that part out of your life. And you also, you know, don't have to blow this other really good thing up to invite this other passion into your life. And for me to just feel empowered to go, okay, like, now it's time to pray and journal and put my strategic brain to work and think about what could this really look like for these two things to coexist. Yeah. I just love it. Like, I just yeah. can't wait. So like, I'm going to be like on Boxer all the time. Like, okay, tell me the next thing. I know. <laughs> What's that? My accountability partner will be like, so <laughs> Shanna, when is this happening? What's the date? <laughs> right, right. Or actually it would probably be not bad. It would probably be for me is like, okay, are you literally resting in his arms? Are you trusting yeah. his timing, his path? Because that, I know you're going to, if, if that's the direction you want to go, you're, you're going to get there. Like that to me, that's not the issue here. The issue yeah. is an aid is, do you feel protected? Do you feel guided? Do you feel that he's got you? Um, that the bottom isn't going to drop out because you're not the strong one. He's the strong one. And we're mm -hmm. not. I mean, a sheep is literally like <laughs> one of the most challenging animals to raise. So if we just keep ourselves in right perspective, a humble perspective in knowing that he's got us, so much amazing stuff is going to happen. Well, thank you so, so much for being vulnerable and transparent. I know like that can be a challenge in itself as an eight, you know, to, to just be here. And so many times like you've opened up, you've had some tears and I just want to say thank you so much because that means so much to me. It means so much to our listeners to be authentic and vulnerable. And here's the thing, it's different transparency is different than vulnerability. Transparency, mm -hmm. a lot of us can be transparent. It's like, I'll tell you these things because I don't really care what you do with this information. Vulnerability is a whole nother matter. It's like, but if you take this information, you harm me. I don't know what I can do. So I just really want to thank you for being vulnerable. Um, with that being said, what you do at uh, community cultivated is amazing. So can you kind of share a little bit more about where people can find you? What, what is the work that you do and how do, can you help them if that fits their needs? Yeah. So we work with a lot of coaches and online business owners. So if you're somebody who you have a coaching program or you have a course or a membership and you have a community element to that, or you want to, and you're like, I know that this community could be a lot more engaged. I know that it could be a lot more thriving or it's doing amazing. And I feel like I really need somebody to support me in that. That's where we come in. So mm -hmm. we're everything yeah, after the sale. Everybody focuses on marketing and getting somebody into their program. And we, we really focus on honoring what you've sold somebody into and creating a really incredible mm -hmm. experience for them, giving them an opportunity to feel connection, the kind of connection that helps them make progress. And so we do all of that um, through consulting and through an online training course. And you can learn all about that at channelin.com. Wow. Thank you so much. And you're so dear to me. I can't wait uh, again. So for our ongoing conversations. And maybe someday we'll come back on and we'll give an update to everyone, like, you know, what God has done um, just through this conversation and where he's taking you. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Well, I hope that this coaching episode has been so beneficial to you as it has for me. 
I get to do this every day to watch people really get the clarity and the understanding that they're looking for so that they can head in a new path that is right for them. So as a coach, as I was going through that process with her, there were so many thoughts that were going in my mind. One, I heard that she was feeling that, um, you know, she's not maybe doing what the Lord wants her to do. And what is that? Maybe I have to scrap everything and try something new and this and that. And at first I wanted her to kind of just venture into that. Like, you know, God's got you kind of like what we did at the very end. But when I heard her real passion, when she was really being authentic, like what she longs to do to really give of herself, her story, her authenticity, that is when I thought we need to really head in that direction because the type seven is constantly chiming in. Well, but you could do this and you could do that. And this could be good. And this will make you feel content and happy and satisfied. And it's a mirage. It's, it's, it's actually not true. And so I wanted to help paint the picture that she has the capability and ability to keep the business and to prop it up in such a way that will sustain her family, but that the real fulfillment of her life is the passion and the zeal that she has to share her story with others, to bless them in that way. And so I wanted to paint that picture for her. So I pivoted from where I was initially at to where I wanted to take her. And she was just incredible. She, she totally went there with us and she was able to see that God has created her as a beautiful type eight with this strong seven wing to bring about so many things. But that's where I was like, but let's not get off track here. Let's bring in that nine because the seven can still derail you. The seven can still promise all the things by doing something new. But what I wanted was her to see, nope, here's what it's going to look like. Everything's going to be okay. Let's take a step back. Let's lay the framework and one step at a time we'll get there and trusting God in the process to hold her tight, to nurture her and to guide her each step of the way. So that's kind of the process that I had in my mind with coaching. It's great to ask lots of questions and to hear them uh, take that journey. Now with the Enneagram, we have to kind of bring in some insights because they don't know exactly how their type is functioning. And so to bring those insights about bringing more of her nine in, using her husband who is a nine to basically coach her in the nine this way can be really insightful. And so I hope that this has been really helpful for you guys to see what Enneagram coaching is like. Cause a lot of you, you know, you're intrigued and you want to be that person that can sit in front of someone and help them transform. And if that's you, then great. I would start with our free uh, mini course on how to lead coach and counsel with the Enneagram. And all you got to do is go to your Enneagram coach.com forward slash mini course and see what it's all about. Um, and then we can always help you if you want to take the next step further. And for those of you that are like, you know, I really don't want to be an Enneagram coach, but man, I can see how getting coached can help me with where I'm at. I've learned a lot about the Enneagram or it's fascinating, but I don't know how to apply it in my own life circumstances where I feel stuck. If that's you, then find a perfect coach that matches your needs at myenneagramcoach.com. We've certified tons of incredible people through the Enneagram, and I know that they would love to walk you through the same process. Well, thank you guys so much for allowing me to just be with you today and this new platform, this new format that we're doing, uh, coaching and interviewing some incredible people like Shanna. Well, I hope that you have really enjoyed this today. And then join me next week where I get to interview Jen Couch. She's an incredible type one from SoberSys.com, and she's passionate to create a space for women to renegotiate their relationship with alcohol without the labels, the judgment, and the shame. And her being a type one, the principal reformer, you're going to hear so much about her passion and how she's done some inner work, self-awareness, self-regulation, but that pesky inner critic still throws curveballs. And so we're going to talk about that, but stay to the end because you're going to see this incredible transformation and these insights that she has at the end, which truly blessed me. And I know it's going to bless you. But as, as always, remember the Enneagram reveals your need for Jesus, not your need to work harder because it's the gospel that transforms us. So I'll see you next week. Take care.